Hi guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is what we're going to be painting today. I'll give everyone another couple minutes to join, maybe just two minutes to see if we're not missing anyone. In the meantime, just make sure you have all that you need. You can be using the same ornaments as I am using. I'm going to be using this clear plastic ornaments that I just purchased in uh, Dollar Tree. So they were $1.25, which is great. And plastic so they don't break, which is awesome too. Um, so that, um, if you don't have the clear ornaments, you're welcome to use maybe a flat ones instead. It's still going to look great. So whatever you would like to paint on, you can paint on any surface pretty much. But yeah, this is what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be using just regular acrylic paint. So again, I'll give everyone another couple of minutes to join us and then we're going to start. Oh, hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, guys, I think we can start. Welcome, everyone, again. My name is Vera. If you haven't met before, I'll be your instructor for today. And we're going to be painting these two awesome ornaments here. Uh, again, I'll be painting them on just the clear plastic ones, plastic ornaments. Um, you're welcome to paint on any surface that you would like to. And I'm going to be using just a regular acrylic paint. The colors that I'm going to be using is black, white, yellow, red, and blue. However, if you guys have pre-mixed colors, you can replace yellow and blue with green and orange. I have those. I don't have those pre-mixed. I'm going to be mixing them from primary colors. That's why I only have primary colors, so I can mix everything that I need. But if you're using pre-mixed colors that you're going to need um, red, of course, you're going to need black, you're going to need white, and you're going to need yellow, and you're going to need orange, if that's your pre-mixed colors. And of course, you're welcome to change any colors. The earmuffs, you can do different color, you can do different color scarves, so completely up to you. Now, another thing, too, is my ornaments are half painted, just because when I was painting them, I was holding them like that. So what you could do is... Right now we're gonna be painting half, but after we're done and this half dries, what you could do is you just turn it around and you paint either just a black background on the um, back and the same, you paint the little snowflakes or you can repeat the tutorial and do the exact same image that you have on the front on a back. Because this video guys, if you're joining us for the first time, just wanted to let you know that the video is going to stay up. It's being recorded as we speak. So basically, you can go back here anytime and rewatch it and do it again. And that's how you can do the second side too. You can just start this video from the beginning and do the second side of your ornaments. Um, yeah, or if you can stay the entire time, you can always come back to it at some point later and finish this. Or if you guys, I'm going to be going at my own speed. But if you find that it's a little bit too fast for you and you want to take a bit more time or your paint is just generally a slower drying paint because we're all different using different brands of paint, right? So some of our paint is going to dry faster. Some of it is going to dry slower. So if it, you have a slower drying paint or you just prefer to have a bit more time for every step, what you could do uh, in a live format, you can't pause the video. However, you can scroll and rewind and rewatch sections. So even as we're in life, you can scroll back and see 
um, and rewatch segments of it. And as soon as we are done, uh, as soon as we're done, the video is going to be recorded fully. So then you're going to be able to actually pause it. So which is a good option too. So I will just encourage you to do that. Either wait until it's done and be able to pause it. Or even as we're live, you can just rewatch certain sections if you need to. Now, as far as brushes, you can use any brushes here. Of course, you're going to need a good detailed brush because there are quite a few details here. So something small, let's say number zero pointy is ideal brush for this. And of course, something bigger, doesn't matter what size you're gonna use. Um, this is number eight, but I wouldn't go by numbers to be honest with you, because all brands of brushes are different with numbers. So something bigger for the larger areas. That's all that you need. Two, three brushes is ideal, but whatever you have, you can use. Oh, hi everyone. So many familiar faces and names here. Awesome. And some who are joining us probably for the first time. Hi, 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 nice to see you all. All right, so what are we gonna do first is we're gonna start with white. I'm gonna start with this guy, but it doesn't matter. So let's grab our ornament. Let's try to put this one so it doesn't move too much. And I'm gonna grab just straight white paint. This time I'm not gonna be using too much water. You know how sometimes when we paint uh, on canvas and we do acrylic paintings, we often, often, often dip our brush in the water, not for the ornaments. Because this surface, if you use too much water on your brush, it's just not gonna stick. The paint is just not gonna stick. It's gonna roll off from your ornament. So that's exactly why we're not gonna do that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start by putting a circle for the face of my snowman. And you choose how far, how, um, much to the top or low, it, the positioning is completely up to you. Because again, we're all using different surfaces. What are we just gonna do one? Circle in white. Yeah, and once I have my circle for the face in white, I'm gonna add a body. Because you see there is a body here. That's a bigger circle that goes all the way to the bottom. So here, and they should be crossing each other. Do you see? They're crossing each other, so. I'm gonna add a second circle. And this one is gonna go all the way to the bottom. All right, so that's pretty much the base for this one. And you will notice, guys, that um, it's kind of streaky and uneven, and that's okay. We're gonna do more than one layer, so that's why it's totally fine for now. We're just gonna do one layer now. We'll let it dry, and then whenever this dries up, we'll come back and we'll do second layer. And that's where it's gonna start looking more solid, and less streaky. Sorry, Brenda, that you feel like I'm freezing. Does everyone else have the same issue? Does everyone else feel like I'm freezing or can you guys see me okay? okay I'll put this one to dry as well for now. Okay, good, good, awesome, 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate your response. Not freezing, wonderful. All right, so now I'm gonna do the base for this snowman. So this snowman is similar. It's gonna be just the base of three circles. And this time it's just gonna be smaller one, medium, and the large one, and the elf, of course, the two little legs as well. So technically five, but the main base is three. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna work from our tiny one to slightly bigger one to the biggest one and then two little feet. And again, it goes pretty far down because again, it's a rounded ornament. So I'll put this one somewhere and I'll grab this guy. And again, with my brush, which in my case is, all, I would say about medium small brush, I'm gonna start with the top and I'm gonna make a small R circle here. Now, keep in mind, you don't wanna put it too high up because there's still um, gonna be a nose, there's still gonna be, do you see a background, a snowflake? So don't put it too high up. Don't put it like almost there. So that's my one circle. Okay, two circles. Let's do a third one. So, as you can see, I did my three circles. And now I'm gonna do the feet. So just two more circles on the sides. Oh yeah, that's a good idea to use an empty toilet paper roll um, or paper towel, yep. To prop the ornaments on to dry, yep, that's a great idea. So yeah, I'll give you guys a second to do that. This one is actually already dry. My paint dries extremely fast. Lucy, I am in Canada. Oh, thank you. My accent is Russian. Actually, it's not fully dry. There's still like a tiny touch. To see if I touch it, it still gives a little bit of white paint. So maybe another second, but it's almost dry. Definitely is getting there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one aside for now. And I'll go back to this guy here. And with this ornament, I actually can move um, 
to our black so I can do our background with black because background with black will take more than one layer as well. So it's good to start with one layer. So again, I'll wash off my brush. I'll take just straight black. And I will color in as much as I can comfortably in black. So again, I'm not going to go too far on the background because I have to hold it somewhere, right? And I don't want to get smudge all that paint and end up with hands full of paint and none of, them, none of my ornament. I think this is about half. Again, more or less is fine because you're going to be always able to finish this later when this part dries. And again, it's going to be quite streaky. If I bring it closer, you can see it's super streaky and uneven on the first layer. And that's okay. That's exactly why we're going to do more than one layer to bring it to a good place where it's solid black, no streaks. All right, so as you can see, I did about half here in black. So again, what I'm gonna do right away is I'm gonna put this aside so it can start drying. Because it's all about layering here to create those solid looking surfaces. So let's find a safe space for it to put it so it doesn't roll too much. All right, that looks good, looks quite safe. And I'm gonna move to this guy and I'm gonna do the exact same thing.
All right, I have the second one. And again, it's super tricky if you look close to it, just because it's a first layer only. So it's quite transparent. It's not ideal just yet, but we'll get there. It takes time, little by little. And then whenever I have that, again, I'm gonna switch my ornaments. So this one is going into drying. And this one is coming from the drying. So let's swap them. Make sure it doesn't roll too much. Okay, this is good. And we'll go back to this guy. The black here is still pretty wet, but the white is super dry. So I'm gonna move to my second layer of white now. Make sure you wash your brush really well in between. And you see now the coverage is so much better. This is with two layers, this is with one layer. A big, big difference. If you guys wanna go extra mile, I'm gonna be doing only two layers for myself personally, but if you wanna go extra mile, I would say just let them dry again and do third layer of everything. That way it's gonna be super solid white and black. But again, it really depends on your paint too. Some paint is a little more transparent in general and you may need to take that third layer, like you may really, really need to do it. And your paint might be even less transparent than mine, in which case you may not even need second layer. Who knows, right? Everyone's paint is different. But again, I usually layering is good. And just don't stop until you feel like you have a good enough layer, and then you can move to next step. But again, I will do just two. I find that two is fine for me personally. All right, so that's my second layer. And again, there are still some streaks that you can see, but overall, this is the comparison, right? One layer, two layers, massive difference. And once we add all the other elements, they're not gonna be as visible. Yeah, whatever guys is comfortable for you for drying ornaments, whatever works. Of course, anything that's like circular-ish to put it in probably is ideal. I find that they're generally fine as long as you lean them against something, uh, even on a flat surface. And again, we're only doing half right at a time. Okay, I'm gonna swap those guys here again. Let's see. And with this one, I'm gonna go back to my white again, and I will add second layer of white.
All right, so I have my second layer here too. It's pretty good. It's really getting there. And again, I'll repeat those steps again. So I'll switch my ornaments and I'll do second layer on black here because the black here is pretty dry in my case again, because I know everyone's paint dries different. So in my case, the black here, there are only a couple spots that are not dry, but the rest is dry. So I'm gonna go back um, and I'm gonna do the black again. So second layer of my black. Okay, and look close up how much more solid it looks. This is with two layers, this is with one layer. You see full of streakiness and transparent. Two layers, pretty solid. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside again. And I'll do final and second layer of black on this guy here.
All right, and here I have it, my second layer of black on my second ornament. So again, I'm gonna wash off my brush and I'm gonna put those aside for now because neither one of them is dry yet. This one, white or black are both not dry and the same with this one. The white is like, it's drying, you can tell, but it's still a little sticky, which means it's gonna need more time for sure. So, nothing really we can do. We just have to wait until they dry. It is what it is. But one thing I can do and I want to do is I'm gonna change my water because those guys made my water very dirty. So, I'm gonna let them all just chill here for a little bit and dry up a little. And while they're drying, I'm gonna go quickly and I'm gonna change my water and I will be back. And I suggest you do the same because we're gonna move to a pretty decorations and we use a lot of black right now, so your water is probably crazy dirty. All right, and I'm back with my clean water, but again, they're still pretty wet, so we'll just have to wait um, probably another maybe five minutes and wait until they dry up a little for us to work on them again. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Good, I'm so glad to hear that. Yes, that's a good tip, Barbara. Q-tips can be very, very useful, absolutely. Another thing, guys, that you could do after we finish, well, actually, there are a couple things that you can do even before we start painting. So I'm using acrylic paint, right? But if you want it to prolong um, the life of your ornaments, you can always use multi-surface paint because acrylic paint is not specifically made to be painted over plastic. It does stick and it works just fine and it's pretty durable, but if you like scratch it really hard, it does come off. Um, of course, just as long as you don't scratch it with something metal or like a nail really hard, it's gonna stay intact for years. It's gonna be fine. You don't have to seal it with anything, but there's also paint that's specifically made for plastic and other surfaces. It's called multi-surface paint. You can buy that one. We don't use it because we only teach ornaments, what, once a year, so it doesn't make sense to encourage everyone to buy special paint in every color and spend more money 
on something you're only going to use once a year, especially when you already have at home acrylic paint. But if you're planning to do a lot of more of a crafting projects and paint on other surfaces that are not canvas or paper, then maybe multi-surface paint is for you. And we use it sometimes um, on like plastic, glasses, bottles. So if you're planning to do a lot of those projects, might be something to invest in. However, keep in mind, multi-surface paint doesn't mix very well. So you may need to buy the colors that you actually want to use versus just the primary colors and mix them. Um, so that's one thing, just so you know, so you're aware of it. And another thing is, if you do want to seal your ornaments after we're done, there are so many options on what you can seal them with. Um, I used to buy this paint. I don't have it right now, actually. But I used to buy this um, glitter paint. It's like transparent, almost glue-like paint with a chunky glitter. That's not small glitter. It's going to be like large chunks. I used to buy it in Michael's in multi-surface paint area section. So I used to seal my ornaments and bottles with that one. But of course, it's only going to work when it's appropriate. But also there are a ton of varnishes that you can find in art stores. Some are spray varnishes, some are uh, liquid varnishes that you can varnish anything with, especially ornaments, just again, to prolong their life. And again, if you're not going to use it for anything else, I wouldn't recommend buying it just for this because it Acrylic paint will hold by itself totally fine. Um, you don't have to varnish it. But if you're planning to varnish in paintings or maybe you have more projects on a go that you would like to use the varnish for, they're not very expensive. You can buy a smaller one for 10 bucks or a spray one for around 10 bucks. So, and that will last you quite a few projects too. So you can do that and that will prolong the life of it. Oh, let's see, you guys have so many Interesting things to say here in chat. Let's see. Could you use dryer to speed up the drying time? Absolutely. If you do have hair dryer nearby, use it for sure. Baby wipes, yes, awesome. That good. That's a great idea. Wipes to wipe off the paint of hands. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, that's a great idea too, to use the plastic. I assume you mean the tray that's like tray that they used to be in to hold them in place. Yeah, that would work. Anything that has that scoopy bottom will work really well for sure. As far as chuck paint, I wouldn't know to be honest with you. I only use chuck paint a couple times in life. And I've never used it on plastic. So I don't know how it sticks to plastic. I would say if you do have chalk paint, try it. It wouldn't hurt. Worst case scenario, if you find that it just scrapes off easily after you're done, paint. If you scrape it with your finger nail and you find that it just comes off really easy, you can always varnish it on top. Varnish will create that extra protective surface so it's not gonna wipe as easy. But yeah, why not? I would try everything. Whatever you have, whatever you have at home, try that. All right, let's see how they're doing. Okay, this one is almost dry. It only has a couple spots on white. So do you see most of it? My finger comes off clear, but I can see a couple spots here that are still wet. Same with this one. It's actually this one is fully dry. All right, at least one of them is fully dry. That's a good that's a good news, right? Yeah, no problem. All right, so we'll talk about green in a second. I'm gonna start with this guy here. This one does not involve green, but I'll tell you how about color mixing for green in a second once we get to this guy. So for this little guy, what I wanna do now is I wanna start on my scarf and on a nose. 
So let's start on the nose. I'm gonna grab my small brush and hopefully your black is somewhat dry. If it's not fully dry, that's okay, but it shouldn't be fully wet either. So I'm gonna start by mixing my orange and I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow. I'll put it on the side. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of red, mix it in. Don't take equal parts because red is more powerful than the yellow. It's gonna overtake your yellow if you do, and it's gonna look almost red. And then to that, very important, you have to add white. Even if you can make the light color without white, you have to have white for consistency so your paint is not transparent. Because a lot of student grade acrylic paint and even professional ac acrylic paint, a lot of it would be transparent. So if you add it over black without adding any white into it, it's gonna look somewhat the color you want it to be, but as it dries, it's gonna get dimmer and dimmer. So that's why we add white. And you see the nose starts on a face part and then it extends into the background. So that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna start somewhere right here. And extend onto background. Ta -da! And to be honest with you guys, for me to look, make it look actually orange and not very you know, transparent, I had to really blob the paint on. So that may be the case with you too. You may find that um, if you just do one layer thin, you still see your black through. So in which case, either let it dry and put second layer or just really pile the paint on because it's a very small area. So I don't see the problem with it being piled on. But again, totally your call whether you want to let it dry and put second layer or pile it on. Either will work. So that's one thing we're gonna do here. And another thing we're gonna do here is that red uh, scarf. So you can use straight red if you love the shade of your red that you have. In my case, I'm gonna need to mix my red with a little bit of yellow. And the only reason why is my red has a bit of a pinker undertone. So do you see if I put it here to quite transparent? It has that pinkishness to it. And even though it's a great color, it's not the color I'm looking for right now. The color I'm looking for right now is uh, more of an orangey color. So that's exactly why I'm gonna take a bit of yellow and I'll mix it into it to just give it the shade of orange undertone. It's still red, it's just gonna have a different hint to it, you know? And with this color, I'm gonna add my scarf. So I'm gonna start from here. All right, so I have the base for the scarf. Now I'm gonna do the middle part. It's gonna be slightly sticking out. And then I'm gonna do the sides. And I'll add a little fluffy ends here. So just with a small brush strokes, I'm gonna fluff up the bottoms. It's just the tip of my brush. Here we go. 
And that is the first layer of my color here. And another thing I'm gonna do right away is I'm gonna take just a little bit of white, not a lot, and I'm gonna blend it in while it's all still wet. So I'll let a brush stroke here a couple, brush stroke here a couple. And you'll see it doesn't look straight white, it just looks a little lighter. A brush stroke here in the middle, then blend it a little and on the sides. All right, so we're still gonna add more white high highlights there and some black, but this is great. This is a good base. Now I'm gonna put this ornament aside. So let's put this to your side. We don't need them for now. And we'll move to the other two. Here is the one we're gonna do now here. Okay, let me see your messages, guys. Debbie, I'm glad, thanks for joining. Nice. We did have snow here too, but it is all gone now. It is quite a sunny and warm two days, but we did have a bit of snow. All right. So on this snowman, again, we're going to start with a car carrot nose. So somewhere from the middle, I would say ish. Towards the side, I'm going to add the nose. You can make it bigger or smaller, that's completely up to you. That's true. We all need a snowman ornaments because there's not much snow currently. This can change. And now I'm gonna move to scarf as well. So the same thing, I'm gonna start with my red and I'm gonna add Scarf base some around here again. Then I'm going to add the scarf middle. And the sides. This time they're going to go a little further. Actually, they can go as far as you want them to go. Lots we'll some fluffies on the bottom here too. All right, so this is what I have. And we'll do something right away that we did on the other one, is we're gonna add white while it's wet. So it blends a little. So I'm gonna take just a tiny touch of white, not a lot, and I'm gonna blend it from the sides. Just a little, do you see, to highlight it a touch. 
and I'm gonna blend it in the middle. And all my uh, parts that are going down. All right, this is getting there too, but now there's another element here and that is a green earmuffs. So, remember someone asked how to mix green and they said that the green is not turning out really well for them. So let's talk about green. Mixing green is super easy. It's just two components, yellow and blue. The more blue you add, the darker is gonna be. The more yellow you add, the lighter is gonna be. And of course, we're gonna need to add white as well to it. And the only reason why, you can make perfect the green without adding any white. You can make green of any shade really without adding any white. But in our case, because we're gonna be painting over the black area, we have to add white so it's non-transparent. Now, what can go wrong with mixing green and why sometimes it doesn't look good? And that wouldn't be something that you're doing wrong. That would be really uh, the consistency of your paint and the pigments that are in your paint. There are different kinds of blue and yellows that you can mix. I haven't met yellow, to be honest, that doesn't make good green. So I assume that's rarely an issue unless your yellow has a really strong undertone of orange and has like a tint of orange. In which case, yes, I can see that causing um, green that's more on a brown side versus vibrant green. But again, that's rarely an issue because usually everyone has yellow that's more just standard yellow versus um, yellow with orange undertone. However, blue can often be an issue. So there are different blues on the market, even from paints that the type of paint that we use, more like a student grade acrylic paint that is meant for mixing, there are at least three different types of blue that are very common to every store. And those are uh, primary blue, phthalo blue, and ultramarine blue. Primary blue is supposed to be super standard neutral. Phthalo blue tends to be a bit on a greener side, so it's a greenish blue. It has a greener undertone, which is perfect. That's the blue we prefer. We use phthalo blue for every single thing we do because it mixes good in every color. It mixes good into purple, it mixes good into green, it mixes good into teal. It's very, um, sorry, the word is leaving me. Versatile, it's very versatile blue. And there is another blue that's called ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is like a blue with a hint of purple. Instead of greener undertone, it has more of a warmer purple-ish undertone. So if you have ultramarine blue and you mix that with yellow and try to make green, it's not gonna give you a good color, unfortunately. And no matter how much you try, yeah, it's gonna be somewhat green. It's still gonna give you green. It's just not gonna be a vibrant green. It's gonna be a very dull green. So that could be the case if your green is not mixing well. It could be just your blue. And a lot of brands, so and that's just talking about brands that only have, let's say, line of 10 colors, right? A lot of more professional brands have hundreds of shades of colors. So they will have, if the standard brands that we use have only three shades of blue, let's say, some brands that are more professional will have, let's say 10 to 20 shades of blue. And anything that has the purple or undertone to it or warmer blue, it may not be called ultramarine blue because again, different brands have their own names. Uh, but anything that looks like it has like a hint of purple or warmth to it is not going to mix good into green, unfortunately. You have to choose blue that's either just blue and doesn't have any hint of anything else to it, or you have to choose a blue that has a greener undertone already, such as greenish blue, for example. So I hope that explains why your green may not be looking the, as green as you would like it to be. So I'm going to mix standard green. I'll say just the medium green. I'm gonna start with a little bit of white for reasons that I explained earlier. Then I'm gonna add some yellow to it and some blue and I'll mix it up and I will adjust accordingly. I'll just see what color I have and what color I would like it to be and whatever needs to be adjusted, I'll adjust that. What am I looking for? Yeah, let's make it warmer. So let's add a bit more yellow. Yeah, that's a good color for my base color. 
because I'm going to use a couple different shades here. So I'll start with this one. And I'm going to put the line across here. And then we're going to do the earmuffs and I'm going to dab those guys. All right, and then I'm going to make even um, lighter and a darker version. So I'm going to start with a darker version. So I'm going to use a little bit more blue and I mix it to some, to a part of my green. I don't want to use up all my green because I still want to use some of it for a lighter color too. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue, mix it in, and do you see it happened to make a darker green? And with this darker green, I'm going to add a flick from each side. So I did flick from here, flick from there, and let's move this one actually out of my way. Oh yeah, that's better. And now I'm going to add, I'm going to dub up the bottoms of my earmuffs. So right over the wet paint, we don't have to wait until it dries here because we kind of want them to blend to a degree. So it's good to do this on wet. So do you see now it's a two-tone? And right away, I'm going to make lighter color too. So I'm going to take the remaining standard green, the one that I started with, and I'm going to take a bit more white to it and a bit more yellow. And with this lighter and yellower version, I'm going to add a line right here on top, so just a little highlight. And I'm going to dab up the tops of my earmuffs. All right, and it's looking good. So now I can put this guy aside. I'm gonna let it dry and I'll move on to my first one again. Okay, I'm going to move my McDonald's coffee cup to assist here. Okay, good, good, good. And we'll move to this little guy. Yeah, that makes sense. Your blue, if that's, yeah, if that's the blue that you have, it makes a lot of sense why your green would look that way. You can even replace green with standard blue. You can just do blue if you don't like the green that's happening for you. All right, so guys, what we're going to do here now is we're going to move to black. And I'm going to take black, but this time I'm going to water it down just a little bit. So you don't want it down too much because it's going to be running and just weird. But you do have to water it down a little bit because we're going to be doing fine lines. And you can't really do fine lines with um, thick paint. So make sure you thin your paint enough 
to give yourself a village to do fine lines. And we're going to be adding it over already painted areas, so it shouldn't just roll off. Originally, I told you do not use as much water because when you put it paint on plastic, you want it to be thick to stick to your plastic, right? But because we already have a layer of paint, now it should be better. And I'm going to start by adding a little touch to our nose. So let's get closer here. I'm going to go on the left of my nose. I'm going to add a little line. Sorry, guys. Oh, here we go. That's what I added there. Then, come on camera, focus, 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 focus. Oh yeah, good. Then we're gonna add eyes. And a mouth. I usually start working from the middle to the left and then to the right. And then gradually making my dots smaller as I go towards one side or the other. Then we're gonna add a bit of black on a scarf. So a little flick from the sides. A little flicks around the middle part. And a couple flicks towards the bottom. So, and I'm gonna add even more flicks actually. I'm gonna water down my paint just a little more for this. So they're a little more transparent too. So I'm gonna add some from this down. You see to darken this up and a couple from the middle to the right or to the left. much like that. Then I'll take more paint and I'll add the buttons. And um, now we're going to add a couple of brush strokes from the ends here, you see, from the sides. So from here, and just a little flick, and from here, and just a little flick. Do you see I don't go all the way? And the same with the legs. So the legs, I'm going to add a flicks around the legs, but I'm not going to go all the way. Right, and let's finish this dude, right? Why not? Oh, yay, I'm glad you're enjoying this. Good, good, good. So now I'm gonna take my small brush, some white again. I'll water it down just lightly though. You don't wanna water it down too much because if you water it down too much, it's gonna get too transparent. But I'm again watering down for consistency so it's not too thick. So it's easier to work with, but not too thin either, so it's not too transparent. And with this, we're gonna move to our arms first. So let's add our arms. So one is gonna be coming from this side. And I'll add a couple of fingers there. And one on the other side.
Ciao, ciao! So that's our arms. Then I'm gonna add highlights on our actual snowman where they belong. So on a nose, I'm gonna add a little highlights here, just like a couple dots or dabs. Then on the eyes, on a scarf, just like a little flick, a couple spots. And on our buttons, of course, just a little dot on each button. And we can move to background. The background here is lots and lots of snowflakes in different sizes and lots of dots. So let's talk about our snowflakes. So again, I will wash off my brush. And I would suggest that you wash off your brush fully every now and then versus just refilling it with paint because small brushes, the paint dries on them and then it clogs your brush and then you're unable to do uh, fine details. So every now and then you just have to wash it fully and then refill with paint and take paint, try to take paint just on the tip of your brush so it doesn't fill your entire brush. And how are we gonna do our large snowflakes? So I usually start from the middle. So I'm gonna put a dot. And from that dot, I go flick up, flick down, flick left, flick right. And then flicks in between, flick, flick, flick. Flick everything from the inside out and then dots on the ends. That's what my large snowflakes are gonna look like. So I'm gonna start by positioning a couple of my large snowflakes, wherever you want them to be. And again, try to make them different sizes, even though they're all somewhat large. Try to make some a little bigger, some a little smaller. We do want a variety. We don't want them all to be exactly the same. Maybe one more big one. And then I'm gonna add a couple smaller ones. So those are gonna be the same, but no dots and smaller, but the same principle. I usually make them just flicks from the middle part. Oh, just a few of those.
and then I'll finish up with dots. So I'm just gonna dot it up, the rest. Some dots are gonna be bigger, some dots are gonna be smaller. Oops. Oh. oh, good thing nothing smudged. All right. And ta -da! our first guy is done. Good, I'm glad you guys like it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this aside, both of them, and I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to do that and then we'll move to our second one and we'll finish up that guy too. Yay, I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so now let's move to our second one here. 
So I'll put this aside. We'll be careful with this one. This one is still wet. And let's go to our, this. let's go to our first one. Okay, stay, good. Good, good, good. And again, we're gonna move to black first and a small brush. And we're gonna start by dabbing a little bit of black right here. Just a touch. See, I'm dabbing with my brush and then I'm kind of smudging it with my finger too. Awesome. And then I'm gonna add eyes. I'll add a little eyebrows and a little eyelashes. Just a couple flicks from the top and the bottom. And then a little bit on the nose. I don't want to fix that eye actually. This eye on the right. Yeah, that's better. I like that more. And then we're going to move to our mouth. Then scarf. We're gonna, gonna flick from the sides first. Then a little bit around. And then some down. Ta da! Here's our scarf. And of course, last thing I want to do here with the black is buttons. You can add as many buttons as you can fit really. So it's totally up to you. No, this is straight black. You know, it might be reflecting blue because I have this lamp here. Um, yeah, I have this lamp right here. And it has slightly more, um, slightly like a blue undertone. It's more like a daylight lamp. So it might be reflecting blue, but you know, it's straight black. Uh, good question. If you use multi-purpose paint, do we still need layers of paint? I would say yes. I use multi-purpose paint myself and I still needed at least two layers every time. So it's up to you. I mean, there are different brands of paint. Maybe you have you get a brand that 
I didn't have, and it's better and it covers it from one layer, but I haven't come across the brand that does that. In my experience, everything that I got, and I only got multi-surface paint from Michaels before. So the paint that I have got from Michaels before still needed two layers. It's similar, it was exact similar consistency to acrylic. The only difference where A, it wouldn't mix when acrylic mixes well, that one, it just doesn't mix at all. So you kind of have to buy the colors that you're planning to use. And um, it sticks better to surfaces. That's the only difference. But the coverage, pretty similar. So now I'm going to move to white here and I'm going to add highlights. So let's see. We're going to add a couple of highlights on our headband here. So just a couple of flicks and dab up the very tops of the earmuffs. And again, I'm dabbing a little bit with my brush and then I'm dabbing with my finger as well. And we're going to add highlights on the eyes. And I usually do one big highlight, one smaller glare. So basically one dot, one big dot, one small dot. Then we're going to do nose, just a little couple of flicks on the right side. And highlights on our scarf. Now buttons, I didn't add highlights on this guy on a button, so let me show you. You see, I didn't add any highlights there. So you can, but you don't have to. It's totally up to you whether you want it or not. All right, and we're gonna move to background and we're gonna do the same thing that we've done with our first snowman. We're gonna start with, sorry, yeah, snowman. First snowman ornament. So we're gonna start with our large snowflakes. You're gonna position those as many of them as you want. All right, I have a few large ones. I'll add a few smaller ones. And then I'll fill the rest with dots. And here I'm gonna add some dots on a snowman too, because I want it to look like that's just a snow falling, right? And it has larger elements versus that other one that I did previously. That's why I didn't add it on a previous one, but I will be adding it 
in this one. And ta-da, we finished this one too. So here they are, our two freshly, actually, I don't even know which one we did today, this one or that one. I think it was this one. Okay, here they are, two freshly finished ones. And actually, you can tell by tags. Haha, <laughs> forgot to remove tags. So that's what it is, freshly finished. And now they have friends, so we have two of each now. And as I mentioned earlier, guys, <clears throat> Once you're done, let it dry fully, and then you can go back and you can do the other side. An easy way to do it, if you're gonna hang it particularly, you know, this side visible, another side not visible, is you just take black, you color it on black all, um, at least two layers, and then you just finish up with those snowflakes all around. If you wanna do a little bit more complicated job, and maybe you're planning to hang it somewhere that's not on a Christmas tree, maybe you're planning to hang it somewhere where you're gonna see both sides, then you can start this tutorial from the beginning and actually do the same image on the other side. So those are options for you that you could do. And also I attached here a nice ribbon. So that's something you can do too, just buy a ribbon, they sell them in a dollar store or anywhere you want and attach it. Any color will work, it really is your personal preference. And of course, if guys, this was your first time, feel free to join us again. We do YouTube live events every so often. We do them at least once a week. Most of the times it's about twice a week. And you can see everything that's coming up in the next month or even month and a half already scheduled as a YouTube live event. So feel free to subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you're interested in more um, smaller group events, we do have Zoom events that we host pretty much daily. Uh, the benefit of those is that you can actually show your work in progress. So you can turn on your camera and show it as I'm showing you now and get a live feedback. So that's an option for those who would like it as well. And I will actually send a link to that because YouTube live tutorials, you can see where they are. You can just go to our channel and it will take you right to what we have scheduled for the next little while so you don't have to look for it um, but for this you kind of have to look so I'm just going to give you a link because links are easy right here it is here's the link to where you can find lots and lots of zoom tutorials as well Yay. Yeah, I would say try your deco art multi-purpose. I haven't worked with that one, I don't think. I think my is Craftsman. I don't remember actually the brand. It's downstairs in my other studio, so I wouldn't be able to look it up now. Uh, but yeah, I haven't tried that one. See if it works. Maybe it will work better for you. Maybe it will give you a solid coverage right away. Who knows? All right, guys. And if you want to share how they turned out, what you could do, take a photo and you can post them on our Facebook. We have a event page specifically created for this event where you're welcome to share all your creations. I'm going to send you a link to that too, by the way, because again, you don't need to go on Facebook and typing anything in a search bar. I'm trying to find this event when I can just give you a link. So much easier. All right, here it is. I posted that link as well. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for joining me, guys. I had fun teaching you, so I hope you had fun painting with me. And 
I will see you again on our next one. Bye, everyone.